we had a discussion come up last Sunday on the on the show that was kind of unexpected on the topic of abortion, and people were asking me to clarify what my position on that is and why, and I I tried to explain to them that I'm not against anybody as in as in hating somebody because they have the wrong opinion or thinking that they're an idiot or whatever. I, I'm after harmony. That's what I want to see come into the world instead of the dark age that we're being pushed into right now. And as far as abortion goes, um, I think a lot of the confusion and enmity comes in between the two sides arguing that sometimes it's not understood that right from when the baby starts to grow, it's not a thing, it's not a p part of the mother's body, it's a new being. And the only, I have reasons for saying this, which we'll get into explaining at some point when we have time. But the basic idea is that the DNA doesn't line up at random, it just doesn't happen according to how molecules and cells come together. Um, it happens to accommodate the person who's going to be using that body, that costume, for the upcoming lifetime. These are conscious costumes that we're wearing. And when it starts to form inside the mother, it's because the new person is there. Otherwise, it would not happen. And um, I have experienced that, you know, shows me that very clearly, which we'll get into when we have time. Anyway, uh, if you understand that's a baby, it's just like the analogy of carrying a baby in your arms, and the baby is totally dependent on the mother or the father, wh whoever's carrying it, not to drop it on the, on the floor and injure or kill it. The baby's completely dependent. That doesn't mean it's not an individual person. It means it's a dependent individual person, and some people who are thinking that abortion is fine, say that, well, it's not really a person because it's dependent on the mother. Um, can't live without the mother. Well, that's like totally illogical. It has nothing to do with anything. The dependency is that that baby has to totally trust the mother and the father, actually, to take care of it, of him or her, and make sure that they're safe and they can grow up normally. Nowadays, so many people are thinking... Uh, you know, it's, they got this word, right? You've heard it. It's called fetus. It means not a human being. And they say, well, it's just a fetus. And we've seen all kinds of interviews of people on the street asking about what they think of unborn babies. And they say, that's not a person. And now they're having these really highly degreed people called bioethicists. And they say, well, actually, it's not a person until it's three years old. So some say, well, it's not even a person until the mother decides it's a person. Up till then, it's fine to kill it. That's what Governor Northam was uh, explaining in Virginia, that, you know, murdering the baby was really fine because it wasn't a person until the mother, with her doctor's advice, decides whether it was worth keeping it or not. Um, that's her mental illness, basically. And... It's not the fault of the person who's mentally ill. They're just not very conscious. But I'm really seeing that we could become conscious and realize you don't need to refer to your religion or whatever scripture you believe in or your philosophy or your doctor to know the right thing to do or the bioethics board. You know because you're a human being and you have this thing called empathy. You know, you've heard of it where you can feel for somebody else or for another being or for an animal or a baby or anything. And uh, when you look at the pregnant woman, you know that there's a person inside her who's like totally dependent on what the mother does to protect the baby. And in my opinion, the father has the same sacred duty to protect the baby as the mother does, right from conception. And if you don't want to have that, there are certain activities you can avoid that will not produce that situation. So, um, you know, don't have sex if you don't aren't ready to take care of a baby and devote your life to that. It's a really straightforward issue as far as I can see. I'm, I'm you know, some of the, what they call pro-choice people are saying, well, you shouldn't be punishing women for their own decisions about 
things happening with their own body. And that's fine. I'm not into punishing anybody, women or anybody else. It's not about the punishment <laughs> or the law enforced by a corrupt government. I, I'm not saying that that's the answer. I'm saying that woman becoming conscious and the man, the father becoming conscious, that that's a human being that's in the process of building their body. And they're trusting the mother and the father to take care of them, especially the mother, and to be careful with everything that she eats and drinks and, you know, avoiding drugs as much as possible, watching how she moves, the right kind of exercise or not exercise and rest and all this stuff. That's a totally dependent person who's dependent for their life on the mother. It doesn't mean they're a thing. It doesn't mean like they're a fingernail or a kidney or some part of the mother's body. It's not like that at all. This is a new person, and this is an absolute, total, sacred responsibility. So that's where I stand on it. Not about punishing mothers who get abortion. Nothing like that. I want the par both parents to become conscious. And at that point, it's no longer an issue. Certainly not an argument. And you can just see, there's a baby. I'm the parent. I take care of it. If it can't breathe air yet because it hasn't been born, that means it needs even more careful, you know, protection from the parents. So that's where I am. Let me know what you think. And uh, that clarifies where I was in the discussion on last Sunday's show in case anybody's wanted to know about that. Talk to you soon.